This video is for day three of programming in LabVIEW. We will begin by creating a program that can collect data from a physical device and plot it on a graph. We begin on the block diagram, right click to bring up the functions palette, go to measurement IO, NIDAC MX, and select create virtual channel VI. This VI will establish a connection with our physical device. We will change the type of data we are collecting by selecting the polymorphic VI selector, left click analog input, go to temperature, and then select thermocouple, because we will be measuring from thermocouples. The node we would like to add is for physical channels. Right click on that node and say create a control. This is the name of the channel we are collecting data from. If your physical device is connected to your computer, it should populate automatically the available channels to collect data from. Select the first one, analog input zero, and we will be collecting data from that channel. There should be a thermocouple already plugged into that channel as well. On the create channel VI, at the bottom, there is a node called thermocouple type. Right click on that node and create a constant. We are changing the thermocouple type from J to K type. Remember, the thermocouple type depends on the material the thermocouple is made out of, and that will affect the voltage output for a temperature uh, measurement. Next, we will add a VI to collect the data. We'll go to NIDAC MX. Select the read VI, because we are reading, a, uh, we are reading data. Add that, you can connect the channel, or excuse me, the task out to task in, and error out to error in. Then on the read VI on the right hand side, there's a node called data. This is the output of the data from that channel. We create an indicator on that node, and this will be temperature. We can also add a chart. Remember, charts are added from the front panel. We go to the front panel, right click, go to graph, and add a waveform chart. Remember, the waveform chart, although the x-axis says time, it's not really time, because it's only receiving one data input, which is our temperature. The x-axis is actually just data points. Now you can run your program continuously to make sure it works. You see we're reading temperature data around room temperature. If I put my finger on the thermocouple, you'll see it goes up, for example. But notice the, the data collection rate is a bit slow. Uh, the, the rate that we collect data at is if determined by the physical device. It's a limitation of the physical device, and we can make it slightly faster by changing a property of the channel. Uh, so stop running your program by uh, unselecting running continuously. Now go to the block diagram and right click, go to measurement IO, NIDAC MX, select channel property node. This will allow us to change a property of the channel we are collecting data from. We left click on property to select the property we want to change. Go to analog input, general properties, digitizer ADC, and then select timing mode. Right now you see the arrow of this property is on the right hand side, which means we are reading a property, but we want to write the property. We want to change the property. So we can change this by right clicking on the property, going to change to, change to write. Now the arrow is on the left hand side. On the node on the left for this property, right click, create a constant. This has the selection of the different uh, options for changing the timing mode. Select high speed. We want to insert this property node in between the create channel VI and read VI. So let's move this over. And we are gonna break these two wires and then insert this property node. And then you can connect the task out to task in, the error out and the error in, and the same task out to task in. 
and error out to error in. Now if we run our program continuously, you'll see we're collecting data much faster. Unselect run continuously. Now we can put a while loop around our program. Put a while loop around the read VI, but leave everything else outside like that. Remember when we create a while loop, we have to add a loop condition or else our program will not run. So right click on that stop sign, the node on the stop sign, create a control. That adds a stop button that allows the user to stop the while loop. Okay. Now when you start the program, remember to run only once instead of running continuously. Because we have a while loop, we do not need to run continuously. Just run once and it will start the while loop. And the while loop will continue to execute until we hit stop. Now let's create something that can control how fast the while loop will execute. We'll go to timing, select wait until next MS multiple, place that inside the while loop. This will force the while loop to wait a multiple of the millisecond value on the input until the next execution cycle. Let's turn milliseconds into seconds by multiplying by a thousand. To find the multiplication function, connect that to the left hand side of the wait till next MS multiple function. On Y, create a constant that will be 1000 to turn milliseconds into seconds. Excuse me, that will turn seconds into milliseconds. And on X, create a control. This will be seconds per data point. Okay. So if we input a value such as one second per data point, we hit run once, and now we are collecting at a slower rate, just one second per data point. We can increase that to half a second per data point, for example, and that increases our data collection. So again, this function does not change anything about the physical device, but it changes how fast the while loop will execute. Now let's look at collecting data from multiple channels. To select multiple channels, we go back to our physical channels control, and to add an additional channel, we can copy the name, add a comma and a space, and then paste the name. And then we will change the AI0 to AI1. So now, in our physical channels, we are collecting data from analog input channel 0 and analog input channel 1. In addition, we must change our read VI so that we are collecting data from multiple channels. So on our read VI, select analog, multiple channels, single sample, 1D double. Notice that our data output, the wires are broken because before we had an indicator for a single element. However, now our data output is an array. So those are not compatible. If we delete this indicator and then delete this broken wire by pressing control B, you'll see the wire is uh, no longer broken. The waveform chart still is connected. However, if we run our program once, You'll see our waveform chart only plots one line. In fact, it's plotting both data points one after another. If I put my finger on one thermocouple and leave the other one alone, you'll see one gets higher and then the other thermocouple is still at near room temperature. So the waveform chart plots both data points one after another, but it does not have two separate lines. So let's fix this and we will be using an XY graph to plot multiple plots. Go ahead and delete the waveform chart and let's replace it with a XY graph. On the front panel, right click, go to graph, find XY graph. On the block diagram, move the XY graph into the while loop. Press Control H to bring up the context help window. Put your cursor over the XY graph. You'll see what inputs are required into the XY graph. So we here it says for a single plot, we need a cluster and the cluster has two elements. The first element is an array of our X data and the second element is an array of our Y data. 
For our case, we're going to be doing a multi-plot XY graph. In this case, we have a cluster that's built from an array of multiple clusters. And each cluster is its own line on the chart made from an X array and a Y array. So right now we are missing our X data. Our X data will be time. So let's make the time data. Uh, if you remember from last time, to make time data, we will use a function under timing called high resolution relative seconds. This VI will return a time. It does not start at zero. It is a time related to your computer. And if we put one outside the while loop, that will be the initial time. And we will put another one inside the while loop. And that will be the current time when the while loop starts its execution. If we take the difference between the two, that will be the elapsed time of the test. So we find the subtraction function. On X will be our current time, the larger number. On Y will be the initial time, the smaller number. The difference, if we create an indicator, this will be elapsed time. This elapsed time data is only a single element, however we want to build it into an array of our X data. To do this, we will use the function from array, the build array function, put this into the block diagram inside the while loop, and we want to expand this to two elements. The elapsed time data will be wired into the bottom element, which means we'll be adding it to the bottom of the list every time we go through the while loop. The built array will be wired into the edge of the while loop, and we want to return this array back to the beginning for the next cycle of the while loop. Right click on the tunnel and go to replace with shift register, then click on the other side of the while loop, on this side of the shift register, we will wire it into the top of the build array function. Also, let's put a constant on the outside of this shift register. This way, when we start the program, the array is initialized with nothing inside of it. So if we start the program, we enter the while loop, this array has nothing inside of it, then we add on the elapsed time to the bottom of this array, the appended array is sent to the beginning of the next cycle, and we continue to add on our time data every time we execute the while loop. Now we have our X data array, we, were, we will do the same thing for our Y data, but first we must separate this data line into its individual elements. We will use a function called index array. Index array will separate the array coming out of data into its individual elements. For index, we can put the index value of the elements of the array that we want to, to output, or we can leave it blank and it will output in ascending order. So we will do that. We will do the same build array function so build array, expand it down to two elements. This will be the first thermal couple. Wire that into the bottom element. The appended array is wired to the edge of the while loop. Replace the tunnel with a shift register. Click on the other side of the while loop. On that tunnel, we wire it into the top of this build array. And we do the same thing again for the second element, or the second thermal couple build array, expand that to two elements. This element is added to the bottom element of build array. The appended array sent to the edge of the while loop, replace with shift register. On the other side, click. This shift register is added in to the top element. Now we have our X array data, our Y1 array, and a Y2 array data. And we want to bundle these into a cluster in order to put it into our XY graph. To make things into a cluster, we right click, go to cluster class and variant, select bundle. Each bundle will produce a plot, a line on the XY graph. The top element will be our X data. So you can wire our X array into the top element. And this will be our first thermal couple. We'll 
wire our y1 data into the second element. From here, we could wire this right into the xy graph and it would plot a single line. So if we run once, you see we're plotting a single line. We can stop, but we wanna make two lines on our graph. So we will do, we will add another bundle. And it has the same x data, wire the x array to the first element and the second thermocouple array to the second element. So here we have two bundles and we wanna add these two outputs into an array so we have a one-dimensional array of bundle, and that output will go into the XY graph. We go back to array, find build array. We'll put it up here. It's two elements. The first element will be the first thermocouple in X data. Second one will be the second thermocouple in X data. And the output of that array is wired into the XY graph. If we run our program, you'll see now we have two lines, one for each thermocouple. So the XY graph is plotting the X array and Y array, and every time it runs through the while loop, it will refresh that plot, and we add on to that array every time we execute the while loop. Here I forgot to add a constant to the other shift registers. You can create a new constant or you can wire in the same constant, which is an empty array, to these shift registers here. That way when we start the program, it initializes these arrays so that it starts uh, from uh, an array with size zero. We can change the properties of the graph, such as the background or the the line thickness by right clicking on the graph and going to properties then we can select things such as the plot we can change the plot line thickness to make it larger and if we go to scales tab we can get rid of the background or however you prefer if we run again you'll see the plot will restart from a fresh uh, plot Now let's move on to saving data. To save data, we will use a VI under file IO called write eliminated spreadsheet. Add that after the while loop because we will want to save the data after we stop collecting the data. We will build our X data, our Y1 and Y2 data into an array. So go to array, build array, expand this to three elements and in each element, put your array data. So each array is already a, ta a list of our uh, X, Y, and Y1 data. And now we're turning it into a two-dimensional array. The 2D array can be wired into 2D data into the right spreadsheet VI. If we run our program now and then stop our program, it will prompt us to save the data. So we can... For example, save some test data and then open the test data. And if we click on our file and open it with a notepad, you'll see our data. However, it's in the format of three rows of multiple columns and we want to change that to three columns of multiple rows. So to do that, we can transpose our data table. On the right to spreadsheet VI, there is an option for transpose at the bottom. On that node, right click, create a constant. It will be a Boolean constant. And we'll change that Boolean to true by clicking on it. Now, if we run collect data, stop, save the data, for example, then open that data, we'll see that is a three columns of many rows of data. However, we're still missing uh, data headers above these columns, and we want to know what this data is. Uh, for example, this will be time, temperature one, temperature two. So to add headers, we will be using the string data type. 
So we want to add some constants of string for those headers. Right click, go to string, and add in a string constant. For this string constant, we can call it time. You can copy and paste this string constant or add another one. And it will be the other channels, such as thermocouple one and Celsius, and another one for thermocouple two. And we want to build these three string constants into an array. So go to array, find the function build array, expand it to three elements. For each element, add in the string constant. Now the question is, how do we add these headers into or above the, these, uh, this data array? Um, we cannot add, we cannot mix data types such as string and numeric in the same array. A solution to this would be to first save this data in a, a separate file. If we right click, go to measure, uh, go to file IO, create another write delimited spreadsheet VI, and this will save our string data first. And this is a one dimensional array. And then we will save the, the temperature and time data to the same destination or the same file as our string data or headers. So in the top right of this VI, it says new file path. We wire this into the file path of the second write to spreadsheet VI. So this will prompt us to save it in a location. And then the second VI will save it to the same file location. However, we don't want to overwrite the data. We want to append to that file. So there's an option to append a file. We can create a true constant or we can wire it into the the true constant we already have. So now if we run our test, we're going to run into another problem. For example, if I hit run, it prompts us right away to save our data. If I'm continuing to run and I look at that saved data already, you'll see it's just our headers. And that's because this VI the first write to spreadsheet VI runs first. There's nothing holding it back. It has all of the data it needs to execute. So it executes as soon as we hit run and then we enter the while loop. We, it prompts us to save the data. And then as we're running the while loop, we stop the while loop. And now the second one will execute and it'll append to that first file. So if we go back to that test data that we saved, that had the headers and we'll see that now the data is added to the headers. So we don't want this VI to prompt at the beginning of the test. We want it to prompt us at the end of the test when we hit stop. In order to fix this, we can take one of these string constants and put it into the while loop. Now this VI is waiting for this data from the while loop. The while loop will not send the data until we close or stop the while loop. And so it will only prompt us after we stop. We can make this program better by giving the user an option to save the data. One way can, we can do this is by adding a structure, a case structure, to where the data is saved. So if we put this around this write to spreadsheet file VI, now we have a true case and a false case. And if the true case is run, we save the data. If the false case is run, nothing is saved. To change between the true and false case, you could add a Boolean switch, connect it to the case selector, or I will show you we can use a dialog and user interface. Select the two button dialog box, add that outside the case structure, and you can wire the output into the question mark, the case selector. On the inputs of the dialog box, you can change the message using a constant. and you can change the OK and Cancel button. However, this still creates a problem if we run the data, the dialog box prompts us before we save the data. And again, that's because the dialog box has everything it needs to execute uh, before we enter the while loop.
so it will execute first. And to fix that, we can take one of these constants, again, put it inside the while loop, so now the dialog box has to wait for that data, and that data is only sent when the while loop closes. Now suppose we wanted to make a program that collected data from multiple data types, such as temperature and also voltage. Uh, we cannot add another data type to this create channel VI. We would have to make another one of these uh, for a different data type. For example, we can copy this and paste it. And we can change this data type, for example, analog input to voltage. And in physical channels too, we can say we're collecting from the AI2. Since we change it to voltage, no longer have a thermal couple type node, that wire is broken. We can still have a high speed uh, timing mode channel property to make it collect data faster. And then we can also add another read channel VI. So we right click, go to measurement IO, NIDAC MX, and read. And then add that into the while loop. Then connect the task out, Task in, error out to error in. Then we can add an indicator to the data line. Create an indicator. And this, for example, would be voltage. Let's try running the program. So if we have two channels trying to run, sometimes it will give us this error, which says the specified resource is reserved. So what it's trying to do is trying to read from both of those channels at the same time and it has a difficult time uh, uh, deciding which one goes first or reading at the same time. So to fix this, we can add an order of operations through the error line. If we delete this error line and add this error line in series with this other read, that should solve the problem. So now if we run, right, we have voltage, nothing is... Uh, wired into my channel so we have a voltage of zero but everything else is running correctly. To save this data we need to turn this single element into an array. We can do that simply by wiring this element to the edge of the while loop and changing its tunnel type to indexing. Currently the tunnel, if I move it away, there we go, currently the tunnel is a solid uh, square. If we right click on it Go to tunneling mode, change to indexing. Indexing will make it so every time the data is sent to the while, edge of the while loop, it gets built into an array. So when we close the array, it will send out a one-dimensional array of this voltage data. And that voltage data can be added to this two-dimensional array of our all our data. We can wire this into this element, and that will be saved in our two-dimensional array. And we can also add a header for that data. So we can create a constant here, and that will be voltage data. Now to recap this program, we create a virtual channel in order to establish connection with our physical device. We tell it to read from channel AI0 and AI1, and we tell it that we're collecting data from a thermal couple. We change the timing mode to high speed so we can collect data faster. We have a read VI to collect that data and output it, output as in a 1D array. We separate those two elements into their individual elements. We also collect time data and we build the time data and temperature data into an array and we can we bundle that array into a cluster that gets put into an XY graph, one for each plot. We also make another channel to read voltage data, reading from AI2. That's read through this read channel VI. And then all this data is compiled into a two-dimensional array that's saved using a read, uh, write to spreadsheet VI. And we also write our headers to a, a, a file and the data is appended to that file location.